because you're on the world stage, and we have some really, really awesome, uh, let me just accept that. We have some really awesome superstars in the audience today, and they range all over the world, Roger. I have, we have great next-gen leaders from South Africa to India. Uh, today in Australia, I see Brazil. I see lots of them from the US across from coast to coast. Welcome to the stage, Roger Love, and thank you for working on the voices of next-gen leaders like those at Enactus. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am honored to be here. So many beautiful faces. Hello, Antonia and Daniela and Tom and Nicholas and and so and, and Nico. Thank you for being here. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'd much rather spend the day with you than any celebrity that you saw in that promo reel. Well, we're grateful that you've uh, spent time with us from the time that you first stepped on the stage at the World Cup 2016 that was in Toronto. You've been kind enough and gracious enough to share your tools, your tricks, your concepts, and to help uh, not only the voices of the, you know, those that we know, but the voice of the voiceless and, and the voice of next-gen leaders who speak on behalf of the quiet corners of the world. So thank you so much. You've helped a lot of our, our Enactus race winners and top competitors help share their story. And this year, especially passion on purpose. So for anybody in the audience who is brand new to Enactus, welcome. Enactus is an amazing network of young next-gen leaders on over 1,800 campuses around the world. We welcome you. We welcome your voices. We welcome the power in your presentations and, and promoting the projects that you do for humankind and uh, for the disadvantage and for people, planet, and prosperity. So thank you, thank you, thank you for so much for being here. <clears throat> and Roger, I wanted to start off with a couple of things. Well, you've had this revolving door of uh, pretty amazing people that have walked through your studio, and I've, I've been there on Sunset Boulevard, but also on stage, you've had people really have a challenging command of their voice, people who stutter so um, with, with such a great imperative that it was really hard to get through an entire sentence. Can you talk a little bit about that kind of transformation for the quiet voices and for the voices that have a challenge, even getting a sentence out? Sure. First of all, people ask me what I do. I say I'm a voice coach and I'm, I'm trying to save the world one voice at a time. And I really believe I'm trying to save the world one voice at a time, but knowing that there are very different degrees of saving the world. And I love working with an actus because whenever I'm involved, I realize that the people that, that the kids that are working on those projects all over the world, they really are saving the world. So, so I love an actus and just want, wanted to say thank you for all the great work that you do and everyone else at an actus. It's all fine and dandy when someone has a beautiful voice and they feel like they were born with it and they open up their mouths and sound comes out and, and people applaud or they say, you sound amazing. But, but that's, that's only one small group of people. And the truth is, is that most people are not born with an incredible voice. We're all just born with an instrument. And it's as if your grandmother gave you a piano when she passed on to heaven and you either decided to learn how to play that piano or you put the piano in your living room and you put frames on it, pictures. It became a frame holder. So really what I do is I take people who have great voices, who have no voice, who have vo voice problems, and I train the instrument because the voice is an instrument. You can learn how to use it. And I love working with, of course, people that, uh, that, that haven't been able to get their voice out before. But what I've realized is that whether you stutter or whether you are very shy or whether you have a soft voice, that you literally can learn how to breathe the way that helps create great sound. You can learn how to control the position of the vocal cords, just like a trumpet player learns how to put their fingers on the keys. And this combination of, of learning a technique to train the instrument and yep. then creating sounds that, that move people emotionally. That's, that's, what, that's what we're here to talk about today. Roger, I wanna, I'm gonna set the record straight on, on two, two things. You, you live in this weird little town called Hollywood 
And sometimes people are like, oh, we're supposed to speak like Roger speaks. But we have people from all over the world, many of an active students and many of the people listening, English is our second language. And so it, I, it's, is it about speaking like Roger or is it about listening like Roger? Let's, let's talk a little bit about bringing authentic, true voices out. Beautiful. I wanna make a, a statement and that is, is that people believe that great communication is about the words you use. But spoken language is processed in the brain first for emotion and then logic. And words by themselves don't have any emotion. So if I say, I love my wife, I hate my wife, I love chocolate, I hate chocolate, you don't know. How do I feel about chocolate? How do I feel about my wife? Those are just words. So whether we're learning English as a second or first or 10th language or any other language that you speak, I say that instead of just thinking that language is a word-based communication model, it should be a sound-based model. I've pioneered a new oral communication technique called deep communication where it's sound-based, if you know the right melodies to make, just like a song, if you know the volumes, when should you be soft? When should you be loud? If you know the right pitches, should you be up here all the time? Should you be down here all the time? The pitch, the pace, how fast or slow should you speak? So I've sort of turned this whole oral communication thing into you should learn sounds because sounds are emotional. Sounds is what the brain listens for first because they think it's the brain thinks that's emotion. So in, in a way, I'm saying I'm trying to tie the whole world together, accent to accent, regionalism from regionalism, country to country, and stop depending upon words to communicate. We should just be able to make the sounds of emotion, which showcase who we really are, how truthful we are, our authenticity. Our, our empathy, we should do it sound-based and then I'm we would so, all be able to communicate better. I, I'm so glad you brought up empathy because that's a little bit more about speaking, listening, being present than it is, or, or listening than it is speaking. And one of the things I'm so proud of these amazing Enactus students is values. Um, our values at Enactus, I, I call them epic. They're almost epic. Uh, when you add empathy, <laughs> they're, 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 they're epic, but um, integrity, first and foremost, number one, above all else. Following that, passion, which an active student exude. Then it's innovation and then collaboration. Empathy is certainly a key. Well, in just a moment, we're going to invite a couple of students up to give their passion on purpose little elevator talk, and, and you'll work with them. Um, and speaking with good purpose is at the core of values, authentically and truly. You and I are both fans of the Edelman Trust Barometer, and Richard Edelman gave, as he does every year, a beautiful talk about uh, a survey worldwide of who are people trusting, who are they not trusting, how did COVID affect trust, how did these little tiny boxes called Zoom affect our level of communication, but trust is a key factor, it's something that we want to earn, we want to keep, we want to always dynamically make sure that we're working on for true and deep connections. So when we talk about trust, how do we start with self, Roger, and how do we start by trusting our own capacity of what our voice can actually do for us? Beautiful. Yeah, as the Edelman report said, that we've sort of lost trust in the media, lost trust in government, that we don't know who to trust. And I bring that back to saying that words lie, words mislead. I could be in the worst mood ever and I could say, I'm feeling amazing today. And you, you hear those words and you're thinking, well, maybe he's feeling amazing, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I have a giant gash in my foot and I'm bleeding down here and you just can't see it. So words lie, people lie, that doesn't make them bad people but it's still word-based. One of my favorite 
celebrity sayings. I was working with Bradley Cooper. I taught him to sing for the movie A Star is Born. And after working for a few weeks, he came in and he said, I love working on voice and singing and just sounds. And I said, why specifically? And he said, because when you find the right sounds, you can't lie. People know when they listen to the sounds you make, you can't lie. You can't sing and lie. They know you're being fake. So it, it comes down to it comes down to being truthful. But first of all, you have to find your voice, I say. There's really two voices when you think about it. There's this inner voice that's inside of our head that tells us things like, get up, it's you got to go to the gym or get up. You, you, the dog needs to go to the bathroom. So this inner voice that's inside of us that, that sort of keeps us sane. But a lot of people, it, when they talk to themselves, they're negative. And they're, they're saying, we can't do this. We're not tall enough. We're not short enough. We're not strong enough. We don't, have the, we don't live in the right country. There's this inner voice. So there's a lot of negative attached to that. So without being sort of woo-woo, I'm saying that you, that you have to be responsible for all voices. You have to sort of train that inner voice to, to be positive and be truthful and be honest. And then when you open up your mouth and that voice sort of comes out, for everyone else to listen to, you already have a head start. So Thank I you, train right. the way people think, the way they talk to themselves, and then I help them figure out what sounds they should make so that people see the best of them, their authentic sides of them, the truthful sides of them. Because really, it, it, the voice tells all. They used to say that the, the eyes were the windows to the soul, but that's not true anymore. Now you just have to know what to listen for to know how people really feel. And how can you be, the whole key of empathy and emotional intelligence is about your ability to showcase how you feel and your ability to read how other people feel, not just listening, but listening specifically. So, so how can you have great emotional intelligence? How could you have great empathy if you haven't figured out the sounds you should make aside from the words that are truthful. And if you haven't figured out what sounds you should be listening for so that you know whether the other person is being honest and truthful. Roger Love is our guest here at the World Class. We're gonna go into listening mode right now. We're gonna to listen to the voices of all of the corners of the world here we have represented today from South Africa to, I see, uh, I see Marissa in Germany. I see Vridi Jane. I see Vebhav in, in India. I see some great representatives all over the world. So let's do this. Let's have a couple of, uh, we'll have a couple of next gen leaders do a quick, you know, one or two sentences, no more than 30, 40 seconds. You'll be using your words as you often lead with because that's really important. And Roger will focus on some of the sounds and how to optimize your story. For those of you new to Enactus, and for those of you who'd like to explore more of these amazing voices, simply go to enactus.org forward slash World Cup. Register, sign up, and check out the amazing stories in the 77 second film, the races, everything that we have to offer at Enactus. All right, Roger, speaking of that, I'm gonna go to the US national competition winner. It's out of UW Whitewater. It's a little home state favorite here. And uh, I wanna introduce you to both uh, Grady and Chase, who are in queue here. Uh, let's go to Chase first. We'll find you. Hey, Chase, give us a wave. There you are, man. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Chase, give us a little bit of your, your, your I, I know that your Adya initiative is unbelievable. Roger, they did this initiative uh, helping bring sight um, and empowering women in, in India to help regain or, or vision tests that, that prevented blindness. They did this through COVID. Unbelievable. So imagine doing this work focused on sight, and yet we have an opportunity to focus on sound. So Chase, tell us a little bit about your, your passion on purpose, and we'll listen with good purpose. Chase. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate the introduction, uh, Terry. And yeah, I'll get started here. So um, to start off, I'm driven by knowledge. The knowledge that there are things that each person on this planet can do to better their own life and others. The conviction one has as soon as this knowledge is attained leads them and others in the Enactus community to solutions that really change the world. In Enactus, we're all on that path, no matter its divergence into different realms. The Enactus community seeks this brighter future and takes the one less traveled 10 times out of 10. 
whether it's combating blindness in our case or clearing our oceans, we have that power because we do that thing and see that bigger picture. This is the knowledge that drives me forward and all the others around me and puts purpose behind my passion. Thank you, Chase. Roger? I love it. Hello, Chase. Okay, clearly very, you're a passionate person. You're doing great work. Let's talk about sounds. There's this thing called squeaky hinge or vocal fry. And it sounds like this, and a lot of people do it. And I, I can't even watch reality TV anymore because everybody talks like this. And you have a lot of that sound in your voice. You're very down low and you have a lot of that. So you're talking about this and I've done this and I've done that. But this is the sound of the vocal cords vibrating with insufficient amounts of air. And then what happens is there's not enough air coming out. I say speaking is supposed to be a physical connection. So unless air is coming out of your mouth, that air is supposed to vibrate the bodies of the people that listen. Well, you're holding your breath the whole time that you're speaking so that you don't have enough sound coming out. So you're not vibrating people's bodies. And also down low in the range is where the voice sounds the less excited. You spend so much time down there. You're like, oh, I just won the lottery. Oh, fantastic. But no, but when people win something, I won the, oh my gosh. Their excitement is a little bit higher in the range and passion is, is, is sometimes higher in the range. So you're very down low and you stay there, which is cool sometimes, but not cool all the time. And you have that squeaky hinge. Okay, so let me fix both of those things. And then let me I also, by the way, I give these, uh, they're not criticisms. They're just sound choices. So that with love and not, not putting you down in any way. And so understand that when I say this, I, you're an amazing person. And I just, we're just talking about specific sound choices. Okay. So you're, like I said, you're holding your breath and you're down here. So what happens when you speak a little higher? Say this for me. I can go higher. All right. I can go higher. When I'm up here, there's air coming out. When I'm up here, there's air coming out. And when I talk about exciting things, I'm going to go higher. And when I talk about exciting things, I'm going to go higher. So here's what I've been doing on my project about sight. So here's what I've been doing on my project about sight. Before, I had memorized a great intro to talk about. Before, I had memorized a great intro to talk about. But I was spending all the time in the basement of my voice. But I was spending time in the basement of my voice. And I was holding my breath. And I was holding my breath. So people knew I was reading. So people knew I was reading. Instead of just talking from my heart. Instead of just talking from my heart. So even when, you're, even when I'm reading, even when I'm reading, I have to make it sound like I'm not. I have to make it sound like I'm not. So read the first two sentences or three sentences of, of that speech that you gave already. Okay. Yes. I'm driven by knowledge. The knowledge okay, that watch. there are. I'm driven by knowledge. See how there's no notes. That's not. I say there's no difference between singing and speaking. So that I put music into people's speaking voices. So instead of like knowledge, you wouldn't buy a song that was like, oh, before you go, is there something I should have said to make it all stop hurting? Nobody, nobody sings like that. Rappers don't even do that. There's notes attached to it. So say, Roger wants a note for every word. Roger wants a note for every word. As if I was singing. As if I was singing. Now say the first line of your speech again. I'm driven by knowledge. Ne and now the next line. The knowledge that there are things each person on this planet can do to better their own life. And now say others. that again. Say that. The, it, you see how you're, you're making all the little words, the and this of, so important. But those are not important. The knowledge that there's people in the world, say it, talk to me like instead of read to me. I'm driven by knowledge, the knowledge that there are things and objectives that people can attain and do throughout an this that everyone. Stop, amazing. Now, take longer, don't just, that was perfect. 
Don't rush from sentence to sentence. Take more commas. I'm driven by knowledge. And take a breath, silence. Because when you, when you actually stop for a comma and, and, and there's silence, the audience thinks, oh, you're thinking about what you're going to say next. And it's a little trick for those people that are reading. They don't pay attention to commas. I'm reading everything and all the words are right there. So why would I stop at the commas? I just have all these words. And then I keep going. And then I don't sound real or authentic. So stop at the comma, wait a second, and then jump in, do it again. But I love the sounds. It was higher, it was full of energy, stop at commas. I'm driven by knowledge. The knowledge that oh, there oh, are- Oh, that's not a comma. I'm driven by knowledge, breath. The knowledge that, give us time. Here's what people don't understand. You think that when I speak to you, your, your brain is processing what I say. But while I'm speaking, the brain is only adding up all the words. It's just collecting the words. And the only time I have a chance to think about how I feel about what you said is when you're not speaking, when you get to the comma. I love red. I love green. I love yellow. What? You're not thinking about red or green. I love red, comma. I love green. You're thinking about trees are nice. I love yellow. And you're thinking bananas are okay if you like bananas. So do it again, comma, higher, more time at the commas and periods. I'm driven by knowledge. The knowledge that there are things each person on this planet can do to better their own life. And other wait, wait. The conviction one has as soon as this knowledge is attained leads them and others to solutions that may change the world. Stop, keep going. In an actus, we are all on that path, no matter its divergence into different realms. Stop. Awesome. So much better. Higher. Remember, why would you want to live in the basement? There's no windows. There's no view of anything. At least go up to the first floor, maybe higher, maybe on the roof. Maybe you've got a rooftop garden. Stop spending all the time in the bottom of your voice trying to show passion and excitement. Also, breathe. We'll talk more about that later, but let the air come out. The words are supposed to write out and take more time at commas and periods. Okay, that's fantastic. Great job. Did you all hear the direction of where I was putting him? And did you think that was more believable as he was reading? Yes or no? Awesome. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Roger. I know it's weird at first. Chase, you went first, man. That's the <laughs> hardest thing. But in active students, that's what you do. You go first. You put yourself out there. I saw Grady cracking up next to you. By the way, we're going to get him on the spot in just a moment. So, Chase, I really, kudos, big thumbs up. Hit those thumbs up. Some love signs for Chase going first. So that's hard. Thank you, Chase, it, feel, it, it feels weird at first, but you're stretching to a place where you don't normally live. Now you've got more range. You don't have to stay up where Roger He's just helping you say, hey, go recognize you got a rooftop garden. You can go up there anytime you want. Go get it. And hey, you can take big, giant, long pauses. So, Roger, I'll, I'll love to talk more about uh, pauses and our ability to process, but I'm going to go right to another student here. Now, I see a Marisa. I see Verdi Jane in the audience. I see some others. So I'd love to go to one of our um, great, just feel free to raise your hand, and Emily will check out the hand raises there. Um, I do have some folks in the audience who um, work with um, some students who have very quiet voices, who oftentimes English, second language, or they might be stuck in an English scenario where they're not speaking their native language, and oftentimes their voice is quieted. So what about that trust factor in projection while we identify who to go to next? Great, the world is full of people who are afraid of volume because they think that volume makes them sound angry. But I've basically identified all the major and minor emotions. There's a handful of major emotions, but up to about 24 or so minor emotions and anger being one of them. And I figured out what are the sounds of these emotions? So there's three sounds that you have to make at the same time to actually sound angry. You have to be louder because when you're angry, you are louder. Your pulse is racing and you've, you've been fighting all these things you wanted to say before and now you get it out so it's louder. So volume is one component of angry. 
But monotone is another component of angry, which means I have to stay on the same note. I don't have time for melody when I'm angry. I'm not singing. It's all just the same note. So I have to be louder. I have to be monotone as if I was only just one note on the piano, the whole thing. That's all only note I know. And I have to speak faster. Of course, I have to speak faster. I just mentioned that my pulse is racing. I've been dying to tell this to you. And now that you're here, I'm going to just spew it all out. So you have to have monotone, no melody, fast pace, and volume to sound angry. Volume alone never sounds angry as long as you mix it with melody. As long as you don't speak too fast, you never sound angry. But people are keeping their voices quiet because they think that volume alone makes them sound angry. But volume is one of the main sounds of confidence. If you don't have volume, if it's not thick and resonant, people think you're not confident in yourself and you're not confident in your product, in your content, in your program. They attach the things that you're doing to your lack of confidence. And let me just say this again, almost every celebrity I've ever worked with in my life is an introvert. So if you think that all of these people that are in front of the camera, actors and singers are all extroverts and it's really easy for them to open up their mouth and be loud and strong and, and showcase confidence, you're wrong. We've all learned that, that we have multiple personalities, multiple sides of our personalities. I'm an introvert. Sometimes I love to be quiet. Really, being an introvert means that just sometimes I need to be alone and plug myself into a wall socket and recharge my energy. But I'm really good at only needing very small amounts of charge to charge me up for the whole day. We're all introverts, all extroverts. We're all shy. We're all bold sometimes. It's just that we have to, what helps is creating voices that go with those different parts of our personalities. So volume is important. Now that you know you can be loud, as long as you have melody, no one will ever think you're angry. They'll just think you're confident. Thank you, Roger. I see some great faces in the audience. Matthias, welcome. Vebhav, he's on his way to Antarctica on behalf of Anactus. So many beautiful voices. Uh, I would love somebody brave to go. Emily, do you have somebody uh, keyed up there? One of our... Um, I'm hoping to reach out to one of our um, amazing women that we have in the audience today. And Roger, what I love about working with Enactus students, and thank you so much for sharing your voice with our Enactus students around the world, is they deserve a world stage. The projects that they're working on might not be a movie in Hollywood. I would say it's a much better story. It's a true story of how do we change this planet for good. And, there has been no more urgency, climate action, economic inclusion, Black Lives Matter, everything that's important right now is a movement and emotion deserves to raise their voice and deserves to quiet other voices so that we can authentically listen. Emily, do you got a, a couple of folks up there? Otherwise, I'm gonna jump to Grady in a moment. What do you got, Em? I was gonna say, absolutely, we have Vridi up next. She's volunteering. Vridi Hello. Jane, unmute. Hi. Uh, so Roger, this is this is Vridi Jane. And where are you today? I'm going to guess outside of Mumbai. Um, I'm in Delhi. I'm in the, I'm speaking from Delhi, India. <laughs> and Vridi. I've been associated. Hi, Roger. So nice to meet you. I've been associated with the Nactus for the last three years. And the experience that they've provided is amazing. And I cannot even tell you like how it has changed my professional and personal life. Um, so I wanted to share that like, um, I have been inspired by my family's history because they migrated from Pakistan to India during the 1947 partition and um, they lost everything. So they started and built everything from scratch. So I always tell people that I stand on the shoulders of ancestors. And what I've learned from um, the history is that it's never too late to start bringing a change. And so I've just started a brand called Clotho um, and it aims to bring the concept of a circular economy to the Indian apparel market. And um, our mission is to prevent clothes from ending up in landfills and oceans. Wow, so, wow, 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 wow. Oh, you're amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, first of all, your accent, your regionalism has melody built into it. There's a lot of yes. melody that happens in, in your accent. So you, 
you know that some because you your parents spoke with a lot of melody that's part that from pakistan right yeah from so, punjab region of pakistan to um northern india now Perfect. Thanks. In in yeah. in those regions, that the the voices often have a little bit more air and a little bit more melody. So that's a a, 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 a some sounds that are that are, that I associate with those with those regions. Not everybody has it, but a lot of people. So I love the the extra melody that you use, and also the air, the extra air. So you have a lovely voice. Also, you've you've overcome certain affectations like a lot of people from those regions they don't have a good th sound they say dis and dat but you say this and that so you already fix the th so that people who speak english know when you say th it's really clear so your words are clear here's something so you have a lovely voice and people love listening to you but here's what i noticed remember i talked about melody when you think about melody, there's really three directions you can go with melody. You can stay on the same note, and that's called monotone. So it's as if I was, as if I was just one note on the piano. This is me. I'm, I'm staying a lot of time on this one note. That's monotone. Then there's another type of melody called ascending scales, and those are the ones that go from low to high. I really like strawberries. Now I'm going from low to high. And ascending scales make people happy. It's my birthday. I love presents. I Each one of you here today is a, such a great present to me. Those are ascending scales. That's great. Then there are descending scales. Now I'm going down the scale. It's my birthday. It's Thursday. My name is Roger Love. And most people use so many descending scales and they don't even realize it because they're going down when they get to a comma and they're going down when they get to a period because somebody told them to do that. They said, oh, the only time you're allowed to go up is when you get to a question mark. I like bananas, question mark, you're allowed to go up. The rest of the time you got to go down. So understanding that there are three types of melody, monotone, which is boring, ascending scales, which makes people happy, and descending scales, which makes you unhappy and sound unhappy and makes other people that listen. You have melody, but you cluster a lot of words on the same note. So what you do is, okay, now I'm talking about this, and now I'm going to be talking about this, and then I'm going to talk about that, and then I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to talk about that. So you're just saying same note, same note, same note, same note, same note, different. Same note, same note, same note, same note, different. Instead of that, how about having a lot of different notes? Say, Rogers, Roger says that I should have a lot of different notes and I shouldn't repeat the same notes over and over. Say, Roger says. Roger says. Rogers, Roger says. Roger, Roger says. Let's try this. Up, skip. Roger Let's do, says. Rod, Roger told me. Roger told me. I should use ascending scales. I should use ascending scales. What happens when I do that is? What happens when I do that is? It's easier to separate all the words. It's easier to separate all the words. Before, a lot of my words were running together. Before, a lot of my words were running together. Because they had the same note. Because they had the same note. Because they had the same, because, because they had the same note because they had the same note. And now just using ascending scales. And now just using ascending scales. I immediately sound happy. I immediately sound happy. And all the words are easier to differentiate. 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 Are to differentiate. Yeah. So now I'm speaking with ascending scales. And so now I'm speaking with ascending scales. And seems like everyone understands every word that I'm saying. And seems like everyone is understanding every word that I'm saying. So that's something very simple for you to, to so that your words don't all bunch together because your words are important too. Right. Use more melody, specifically ascending scales, because when people hear that the note changes on the word, 
that word sticks out. So what I'm saying is we shouldn't be speaking monotone at all. We should have lots and lots of melody. It should go up, it should go down. The word from word to word to word, it should move around and be very musical. And that keeps people's attention. As, and so just get out of that monotone, 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 special, monotone, monotone, special, and mix it up like that. Beautiful job. Thank you Three. so much. Thank you, See, watch, so watch. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Greedy, uh, first and foremost, thank you for all the work you do. It's really amazing. And I just want to acknowledge and respect that so many people, English is their second language. This is not about speaking English or better English or globalization. It's really about how do I get more people to open up and be able to listen to my story and my passion on purpose. And and so really, you know, Raj is always very sensitive to really finding that unique voice pattern and that beautiful melody and bringing it out. I see Yandili, uh, friends from South Africa. Um, and I see lots of really great people from all over the world. I know in a, in a moment we'll, uh, we'll jump over to Grady, uh, but please just go be, be brave. Antonia, I see you, I see you. Come on, be brave. Raise your hand and, and really offer up your voice so that um, we can talk about these opportunities. So uh, about to go to Grady here, but Roger, thank you. I wanted to quickly interject, you know, sometimes before I, uh, I, was, I was watching uh, Vridi, you know, use her hands too. And I, sometimes I watch voiceover artists and they'll just, they're not on camera. So they'll go, bop, 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 and they'll talk up here and then they'll do it, you know, and they'll, they'll move their hands around. And then when we open up our bodies, our voice changes too. That, that actually is very helpful, I, it, it feels like, to, to get some physical movement going. Yes, I always say that I can't change anyone's voice unless I change their mindset and their physicality. Okay. If you were a fly on the wall in, in a recording studio and you, and, and you listen to any of your favorite singers in the booth while they're recording, they're like making faces and they're making, <laughs> they, they, they don't want anybody watching them because they're so, free and so expressive with their body and they just want to be very physically open so yes i say that it's very difficult to be a great speaker if you're only thinking that voice is from here to here Thank i you, say Roger. that that voice is a full body sport that you have to energize from your toes all the way up to the last hair on your head that it's their whole body has to get involved and that's the other thing that, that shows authenticity when you're speaking. If you don't move when you speak, then what happens is that people don't perceive you physically attached to the things that you're saying. But when you move, even moving towards people, I call it the lean. And I, I taught people to do this through all these Zoom sessions. We're used to keeping a particular distance away from the camera. And then we just stay here. Here I am in a frame that I've set up and this is what I sound good. But I do this all the time. I'm like, no, I lean in. I'm like, no, I want to talk about this. Just, just leaning into the camera makes people think like, oh, he's really serious about that. Yeah. Right. So the physicality of it. And it, at first for, for many people, this feels really weird. Like it's strange. And of course, the beginning of a good idea really is strange and weird. But you're really helping stretch people. I'm going to go to Grady in a moment. And I also want to talk about, you know, sometimes like before you speak, you go, Arr! you know, you try to clear your voice. Some people drink coffee, maybe tea. What are some of those good, bad practices really quick? And then we'll go to Grady and we'll go to a couple others. Great. The goal is so that, first of all, raise your hand if you think phlegm is a, a, a bad word. Is phlegm a bad word? Raise your hand. No, it's a great word. Phlegm is the lubricant of the vocal cords. The problem is when the phlegm gets so thick that it coats the vocal cords and they can't touch the way they're supposed to, then, then you have to clear your throat all the time and it, <clears throat> it feels like there's, there's gunk in there. So what are you supposed to eat or drink to not have so much gunk? Well, the number one thing that you need to do is you need to drink a lot of water because when you drink, you're thinking, oh, I've got gunk there. I'll drink and it'll get rid of the gunk. It's not true. The gunk is on the vocal cords, which are in the inside the air hole. And the, when you drink, it goes down the food and liquid hole. So everything you drink doesn't even go to the vocal cords, doesn't even touch them. The only way to get water to the vocal cords is have so much water in your system that after 
Water goes to all the vital organs to keep you alive. A little bit of water goes to the salivary glands and it happens internally. It doesn't happen by drinking it. It happens through, it goes to the bloodstream. And so you have to drink a lot of water. All right, coffee? Coffee, anything that has caffeine in it has the tendency to speed up the production of thick mucus. So caffeine, anything caffeinated, caffeinated tea, caffeinated coffee. If you're drinking a lot of caffeine, then you're probably having extra thick mucus. Sodas, anything with a lot of sugar can create extra thick mucus. So this idea, tea, caffeinated tea with honey and lemon, honey gives you thick mucus. Lemon, when you introduce citrus to your mouth, you salivate more. When you salivate more, the overproduction of that salivation makes thick mucus. So dairy, caffeine, Lots of sugar, those are things to avoid. Have all the tea you want, just have it herbal tea. Have decaffeinated coffee. All right, Roger, we got a lot of students waiting. And so I, we, let's try to go high speed. Can we do a couple of high speed rounds? High speed, I, I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm long winded. Nah, super cool. I know, I, I, we could do this for hours, but we only have minutes. So I'm gonna flip over to uh, Grady and uh, UW Whitewater, Wisconsin. I think Jefferson Brady. said, Jefferson said, I apologize for the length of my letter. I didn't have time to make it shorter. Exactly. Might not have been Jefferson. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, so goal setting has always, always been, been an important part, part of my, of my life. life. Uh, I'm playing like a little top. Oh, well, there, we've got some kind of uh, echo. You've suddenly moved to the to Grand Canyon. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Uh, turn off the mic. I mean, no, turn, turn, off the, turn off listening. Okay. You have your speaker too loud, and that's why it's feeding back. Okay, so turn down the volume of your speaker, not the mic. How about, How about now? now? We better? better? Nope, mm. it is not greedy, but I'll tell you what, you work on that. I'm gonna go to Vabehav quickly. Vabehav, where are you? Just give your hand a wave. Vabehav was uh, featured the World Cup. We learned that he was on his way to Antarctica with a very, very uh, special journey and Thanks to his appearance at World Cup, he was able to help secure funding. He's on his way in March. Vabehav, say hello to Roger Love. Unmute. Hi, hi. Thanks, Terry. Hi, Roger. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. I think this is the best Zoom session that I had in the last few years. I think the perspective of uh, like the Zoom calls that we had before this, my perspective has changed completely. With this Zoom call, this is the most entertaining Zoom call that I've been a part of. Thank you. I want to be entertaining, but I want to be instructive. So I already know what I want to say to you. A lot of okay. people, when they speak, you have a lovely smile. And, but when you smile, the teeth are very close to each other. That's what happens when anyone smiles. And that when sound tries to get out, it tries to get out of the mouth. And as it goes past the vocal cords and floods into the mouth, if the teeth are too close together, the sound says, oh, I can't get out that way. There's a, there's a gate. So then it starts to look for other ways to get out and it goes out towards the sinuses. It says, hey, I've heard there's two holes up higher. Let's go there. And it goes, and the sound goes more nasal. You need to drop your jaw. I, Roger said, I need to drop my jaw. Roger said, I need to drop my jaw. Great, more. Roger wants me to drop my jaw. Roger wants me to drop my jaw. Drop, drop, drop my jaw. Okay, it's drop my jaw. If I drop my jaw, if I drop my jaw, the sound comes pouring out. The sounds come pouring out. And I sound a lot better. And I sound a lot better. Okay, that's what you need to work on. Smiling yeah. is great. Smile when other people are talking. Drop your jaw when you're speaking. And this is tips for everybody. And listen, I, I see a lot of smiling faces, but those are breakthroughs. We're, this is not to, we're not making fun of anybody. Just that these are simple exercises that make us feel silly. 
It's silly to do, but it really honors you. It moves to your true voice, authentic capacity for other people to listen, and those great pauses in between. I'd love to go to Germany. I see Marisa there. Hi, Marisa. How are you? Uh, Roger, welcome to Marisa. She is one of our amazing Anactus, just a brand ambassador. She always rallies quite a few people. I think she's probably responsible for quite a few people on this Zoom call. Hi, Marisa. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, uh, Marisa. Great to be here today. Um, I think in German, my problem is that I am too fast when I'm excited, like right now, and that I am still a little bit afraid to talk English. So in every call, I say sorry for my bad English. Do I have to tell you more about me? No, okay, I'm no, I like you already. I like you already. I like all of you already. Okay, first of all, your English is great. Your English is great. How do I de decide that? Because I understood every word and every single person in, the, in this session understood every word you said. So stop apologizing for English. I never, I never start any conversation by apologizing for anything unless I'm late. I'm sorry, I'm late. Stop apologizing. You. What you're doing is you, remember we talked about monotone? You're staying on the same note. So what happens when you're monotone, people think that they know what you're gonna sound like next. And then when they think they know what you're gonna sound like next, they think they know what you're gonna say next. And then they tune out, like you don't have any surprises. So it's the monotone. You're not going high, you're not going low. Say this, Roger said, I need a lot more melody. Roger said. Roger I said, need... see, Roger okay. said. Roger, <laughs> Roger told me. Roger told me. Higher, need... Roger told me, Roger told me. Go really high and told me. Roger told me. I need, I... A, I need a lot more melody. I need a lot more melody. I need a lot more melody. I need a bigger jumps. I need a lot more melody. I need a lot more melody. And sometimes. And sometimes. And sometimes. You see how that, if I was a piano, mm -hmm. that would be from one note just to the next one. But I want to go, and sometimes, I want to make a big jump on the piano. And sometimes. And sometimes. Better. Much better. Much better. Much better. So you're afraid of adding melody thinking it'll make you sound funny. It'll make you sound more personality driven, right? You, you have a very expressive face. You've been giving us lots of smiles and, and all kinds of emotion, but yet your voice is sort of unemotion less because you've been thinking your English isn't good enough. Forget about words. We already understood them. I'm going to add a lot of melody with big jumps. I'm going to add a lot of melody with big jumps. Right now, the big jumps are not big. Right now, the big jumps are not big. Now do this. Put your hand like this. Say, low, high, low. Low, high, low. Roger said, hello. Roger said, hello. If I move my hand, if I move my hand, suddenly my voice follows. Suddenly my voice follows. I need to sound like that. I need to sound like that. That goes with my happy face. <laughs> that goes with my happy face. So stop avoiding that and realize that that makes you sound more connective, more, more, uh, more, more, more believable and more positive. And people want to listen to happy people, not monotone people. Okay, fantastic Thank job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. You're one of my favorite people to listen to anyway. And so your default is already cool. Now it's, it's super cool. And thank you because you all deserve to have powerful voices and presentations. And sometimes you only get a moment. You're in, you know, it's a, they don't call it an elevator pitch by accident. You may have one floor, two floors if you're lucky. You get three floors or a couple steps with somebody that really deserves to hear you and your story and your passion. And for those of you in entering careers, to really bring that across that passion and that purpose and speaking with good purpose and integrity and trusting yourself. Not a, how are you? I see your hand up. How are you? How are you? 
looking great up there in the corner. Please unmute and say hello to Roger Love. Hi, Nada. Hello, everyone. Hello, Roger. It's nice Hi, Nada. to see you, everyone. <laughs> it's my honor to be with you. <laughs> My honor to be I'm with Nada. you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Nada from Egypt, from Albert, Egypt. I have the same issue as Marlissa because uh, Egypt uh, is, English is my second language. So uh, I'm not practicing in uh, talking. Uh, I used to listening more from movies and uh, songs. But in now, <laughs> I'm so worried. But I joined in Actis uh, last year, but unfortunately, I didn't have the choice. Uh, I didn't have the chance to be in the stage last year. Um, okay, I got that's you. It. I got you. Okay. Thank Again, you. don't apologize for your English. We understood <laughs> all the words. Okay. That's, Thanks, all, that's all you can get from a language. Understanding okay. the words, okay? Then okay. the rest yeah. of it is what sounds are attached to it to make okay. people feel things, right? Mm. So, right. so you're great, as all of you are. And thank you for being here and being open to not only having your mouths open, but having your brains open <laughs> to, to hear some of these ideas. You're okay. patterning what we talked about before. You start to stay on the same note and then all of a sudden you'll go up and you'll stay mm. on the same note for a long time and then all of a sudden you'll go up. But that's not a good pattern because that's predictable. Mm -hmm. A great speaker is unpredictable. You don't know what I'm going to sound like next. Sometimes I could be loud. Sometimes I could be soft. Sometimes I could be edgy. Sometimes I could be airy and whispery. And it is that, that mystery of what sound is going to come next that makes you happy to stay with me because you don't know how that sound is going to make you feel. So in the right. end, a great communication is you both went through multiple emotions and then got to the end of the conversation, not just one emotion, not just one sound. So you need to mix it up. Let's, let's use this example. People think they found their volume. So either they talk soft all the time or either they talk, they found a volume that they think works. Mix up your volume. Do this for me. Roger says, when I'm excited, I got to go high. Roger said, when I'm excited, I can go high. And I'll be really loud when I do that. And I'll be really loud when I do that. But then sometimes I'll get super soft and be, and be more empathetic. But sometimes I can no, go even softer, so soft. Even softer, airier, even softer. But sometimes I'll add all this air. But sometimes I will do all this air. Air, air, lots of air. And lots of air. So what if I was down here, soft and airy? And when I'm down here, I'll be soft and airy. Even softer. What if I was even softer than that? When I've been even softer than that. Then I would be able to say, now I'm really happy, but now I really care. I will be that I'm happy, but I really care. No, nope. now I'm really happy, but I really care. You didn't change the volume. Imitate me. Now I'm super happy, but now I want to be more caring. Make a big now change. I'm super happy, but I really care. So if I mixed up my volume. So I mix up my volume. It would give the chance to showcase different emotions. <laughs> to showcase every emotions. That's right. So you play with volume changes. When it's serious, maybe you could be a little softer. When it's happy, maybe you could be a little louder and a little higher. And then people would start to listen to your voice for the emotion, not just the words. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank not, you. Thank not, you uh, so much. Shukran, thank, shukran, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, we're into overtime here, uh, Roger. And uh, some of the things that you say about, you know, just changing your volume, we do conversationally, but something happens to us. Maybe when we get on a Zoom or a stage, things change. Or sometimes we go crazy because there's a microphone in front of us and we, we pose ourselves and things change. But what I hear you saying is all of those beautiful things that we do with our friends, we should do with the friends of our world, the world, and, and reach out. So a lot of this feels innate. It feels natural to us. And you're just saying, hey, it doesn't matter whether you're on a stage or there's a microphone or on a Zoom. Treat us as a one-on-one -on -one 
just like your friends. That's part of what I hear you say. That is what I'm saying. And I'm saying enter into conversations with thinking about what emotions you want to showcase instead of just what words. Enter into conversations saying, how does that person that I'm talking to feel? And what emotions would I, should I help them go through so that the outcome of the conversation achieves something great for all of us? What emotion, if I, I'm writing a, what I'm going to say for my Enactus pitch or any pitch, instead of just writing words, I make little notes on the side. What's the emotion I want to showcase here and I want people to feel? And then the next paragraph, what's the emotion here? Nice. If we start thinking emotions, how, what do people need to feel? Then the words will flow. Because if I know I need to comfort you, then my voice will be comforting it'll be a little softer, it'll have a little bit more air and the words will flow out from that comforting place. And if I need to get you to follow me into battle, then I'm gonna get my voice into a place <laughs> now, we're moving forward, bayonets out, move forward right. towards, towards battle. Then all right. emotion first, let the sounds be that, then it's all truthful. Awesome, Roger, we're into overtime, thank you kindly. For any of you joining us, want to hear these great voices from around the world, go to anacus.org forward slash World Cup. Listen to these amazing stories. Roger, thank you so much for all of your support, helping voices from around the world rise in a time we need to be heard now more than ever. Is there a final exercise or a tip that we could all do collectively together as we end this session of the world class? Most people breathe in through their mouths. When everybody do that right now. Breathe in through your mouth, so your mouth's open. Do you feel how dry that makes the back part of your throat? That totally makes your vocal cords red and puffy and swollen. Close your lips, breathe in through your nose. That's the most important thing you can do. Inhale through your nose. That's 50% of diaphragmatic breathing. So we inhale through the nose. We pretend there's a balloon in the stomach so that the tummy comes forward. And here's the lesson. Roger only wants me to speak while my stomach is coming in. Most of you are not breathing into your nose, not letting your stomach come forward, and then keeping your stomach stationary. But when my stomach is stationary, I sound nervous. I sound tight. I sound like I'm asphyxiated. There's no air. Breathe into your nose. Pretend you have a balloon in your tummy. And learn to speak while your stomach is slowly coming back in. That'll create volume and send the right amount of air and that'll vibrate the bodies of the people. And just remember, you are not the voice you are born with. Start recording yourselves so that you can hear what you sound like. Then add more melody, then add more air, then add more ascending melodies, then add more volume and start to love your own voice so that when you give it to other people, they'll feel your love for your voice and, and, and then we can take the great things that you are all doing in the world and give more voice to them so people can feel what you feel. Thank you all so much for spending the day with me. I really appreciate it. Terry, thank you for sharing some of the greatest people that I've ever met with me. Roger, I wanna share a little love to you from all of us all around the world and everybody feel free to on mic. I want you to make some sounds, make some noises. Welcome, Roger Love, to the world, the world class, man. Would you be back again? Would you come back for an encore sometime? Absolutely. More love transformations. we we'll love to have you back in 2022. Unmute yourself. Scream out loud. Say hello. Welcome each other. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. So thank much, you Roger. Roger. So thank you so much, Roger. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks very much. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you made my week. Thank you so much. You made my week. Thank you. Thank you. You made our week. Done. That's it from the world class. So happy to be here at Carney Point, live from almost New York. It's New Jersey. We've got some amazing world classes coming up next week. We have another one with Mathina James Brightful, The Art of Storytelling. We have one coming up October 9th, which is, uh, sorry, uh, December 9th, which is optimizing your LinkedIn profiles and much, much more to come. I am so grateful to serve an actus. You're why I wake up each and every morning seeing these beautiful voices of the world, sharing greatest stories. Thank you, thank you kindly. Welcome again to the world class. Make sure you go to enactus.org forward slash 
World Cup and sign up and join and listen. Thank you.